What is up, my Yu-Gi-Oh bros? I'm your host, the one, the only, the RJB Zero. Welcome to Yu-Gi-Oh and Business Casual. So last night, I want went on a huge Karakuri craze, um, partially because I was just thinking about back in the format when Gear 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 wasn't around, uh, players had started to use Karakuri Gear Gear, and then they realized that the pure Karakuri deck was a lot more explosive and a lot more powerful than Karakuri Gear Gear, so they started using that instead and started topping major events. So I was like, why don't we try using Karakuris again? Uh, this particular duel that I just showed you, I just wanted to show, uh, even though it didn't last very long, partially because I went ham, and you can see that I could have made even more plays because I have another uh, E-Telly in my hand and a D-Synchro, but the that guy was so funny because he was one of those people who, when he's losing, he pretends that he's just really freaking bored. So he was like, yawn, your deck makes me fall asleep, and then he quit. So, and this duel that I'm showing you right now is a Light Sworn duel, and after I commentate this Light Sworn duel, I'm going to talk a little bit about the deck itself and how it could fare in this format. But I wanted to commentate this duel uh, because I make a pretty serious misplay uh, during part of this duel that could have possibly made the game go a lot differently. Now, you can see that I basically bricked uh, in my opening hand. However, that changes to some degree during the next turn when I top deck uh, my uh, quick, which I decide to use to help me go into some plays. Using my Shogun Bure, I go for a desynchro play. I summon uh, Bure again. I summon the Strategist. Now, this is where I messed up. I should have used Strategist's effect to also shift Lumina to defense, knowing the possibility that he had Honest in his hand, but I did not do that. I ended up trying to shift another monster to defense mode. Uh, just, I don't even remember why, and as a result, I gave him a huge opening to go off on me with JD uh, and some Light Ray Diabolos plays, and uh, that really shouldn't have happened. Uh, this was also the duel that made me realize that I should be running Crimson Blader in my extra deck for this deck. Uh, so that's that duel. So I'm just going to let you guys watch the duels as I talk about the deck itself. This deck is actually extremely fun to play. Now, it seems really linear because all you do is summon machines and synchro for your Karakuri synchros, but the combos are actually really difficult to pull off. Like, you have a ton of options for ways that you could go with a single turn, uh, because of just the sheer number of different monsters you could possibly summon from your deck with your Karakuris, uh, and the order in which you can summon your Karakuri synchros and stuff like that, that if, like, you go one step wrong, uh, there are a lot of ways that you could lose, but it's also, so it's, it's, it's really a fun deck to learn to play, uh, it's challenging, uh, it's also just kind of fun to play because of the sheer number of options. It's really explosive. I think the real reason why this deck has yet to show up this format is because of the heavy use of back row, uh, and also to some degree the hand. Soul Charge is actually really helping this deck. Uh, as you may see in one or two of these duels. Soul Charge is a great asset for Karakoris. We do, of course, have a ton of other revival cards available, uh, like Iron Call, for instance, but Soul Charge is just really huge for this deck. Um, so that is one thing this, in this format that really should make the deck do really well. However, the hands and a ton of back row exist, so this deck really cannot compete necessarily with this current very control-based format. Maybe in a faster format, uh, we will be able to compete. For instance, the Shadow Satellanite format uh, may be a format in which Karakoris can compete, particularly against Shadows, since it is so easy to make a Crimson Blader with this deck, which is really problematic for things like Shadow Fusion, which, while Crimson Blader keeps attacking, uh, cannot really be used. It can also run Soul Drain and Defissure and a lot of other fun things like that to really shut down the Shadow strategy, uh, all Light Mirrors and stuff. So the deck really has the potential to take down a faster format, and it's really explosive, and I'm excited to play it. I'm actually going to try building this deck in real life. There are a lot of new cards that we have that we did not have during the last few formats where Karakori OTK was a thing. You can see in this duel that I was trying to try uh, use Noden, the Elder God, to try and make this deck even more explosive, but then I realized that Noden God not being a machine really makes it unuseful for this deck. But it could be used, especially if we could get ourselves a 20-card extra deck. And this final duel is against Macro, which was kind of an interesting uh, matchup. This deck really doesn't have that much of an issue with Macro. It probably wouldn't use it itself, 
Um, but you can but you can play against it. Another really nice thing about this deck is it can run and the band played on. It can draw a ton, which can mean it can make Flying C really good, which is a card that I'll be talking about at some point in this week. I may have already talked about it, uh, depending on when I upload this video. Um, it can run just a ton of really ridiculously good side deck cards against the current meta. However, the extra deck space is the biggest problem for this deck. There is not enough space to do for the, this deck what it could. This deck has just so many options. You could go for Xyz plays, you could go for tons of different synchro plays, but you just do not have the space because of the importance of the three shogun, or the two shoguns, I suppose, but the three of each shogun. Um, so I just really wish that this deck could get a 20 card extra deck because then it would be absolutely spectacular. Um, another really nice thing about this deck is its ability to use, uh, what's it called? Um, uh, the, the Royal Decree, not Royal Decree, yes, Royal, no, the, 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 the yes, Imperial Decree, Ro Royal Decree, Royal Decree is the trap card that stops other trap cards, I, I'm certain I'm thinking of the right card, anyway, that card is really good for this deck, uh, and it allows you to go off, as you probably saw in one of my first few duels, um, but that's just kind of the end of that. You're about to see me just kind of whoop some major S against this macro deck uh, using some wombo combos. It's really cool that we also have Dragasack and Big Eye now uh, to play with because it allows you to finish off your plays a lot more effectively, not just with like a Stardust, but you can go like Dragasack, Felgrand, and Beast and just do some crazy wreckage, as to some degree you can see in this duel. So here's kind of the deck lineup. There are a few modifications that I really want to try out. For instance, running the Watchdog so I can run a couple of different level 8 synchro plays um, and also make my standard plays a little bit uh, more consistent being able to go into Beredo, which is the really good uh, synchro that you want to be able to make. Um, a couple other things that I want to try, running Triple Anatomy, um, running a couple of different Xyz monsters over a couple of the Synchro monsters, maybe taking out Felgrand and trying out maybe an Alucard or something like that. But that's the deck. I hope you guys like this video. If you did hit that thumbs up button. If you didn't, let me know why in the comment section below. And of course, subscribe for more deck discussion analysis and general Yu-Gi-Oh! shenanigans. I'm your host, the RJB Zero. Thank you guys for watching. I've got a jet. See you guys.